When it comes to the best game I have ever played, 10 minutes probably ain't enough. I briefly mentioned in last time's closing statement that Long War is a technical marvel. I'm not entirely familiar with the technicals behind how all of it works, despite digging through the i &I files like a mole for half a decade, but I know enough to confidently say that it is insane. Long War revamps not only basic stuff like UI, but dozens of mechanics. Some of the tactical changes are the removal of meld timers, completely randomizing enemy and meld placement, adding new spawn locations on every map in the game, doubling if not arguably quadrupling the number of soldier classes, and casually adding an entire progression system for the aliens which plays into the strat layer. In vanilla, if you see a sectoid, it's gonna have three health. In Long War, alien types and stats, as well as UFO types and their stats alongside pod sizes, all increase throughout the game based on the alien's research, which they increase over time by succeeding at missions. Aliens also get resources for succeeding missions. The distinction between them and research may seem confusing as they get both from similar sources, but while alien research is used to determine enemy strength, alien resources determine mission quantity. They have to spend resources to conduct missions of any type, whether that be abductions, bombing, scouting, or the dreaded base defense. Being shit at the game directly correlates to the enemy's success rather than being purely determined by time. I noticed while doing my own research for this that aliens get a boatload of research if you incorrectly accuse countries of harboring the Exalt base, and so I went ahead and dumpster dived through some of my old save files, took me like half an hour to find the one that worked, and practiced some... realpolitik. XCOM campaigns start in March, and this game was in July. And yeah, there was a sectopod in the mission. They're the last enemy to ever show up in the game, and they usually arrive by March of the second year. <laughs> in case that all wasn't enough, aliens also have a threat mechanic which increases if XCOM succeeds in shooting down or assaulting their UFOs. The entire purpose of this mechanic is to fuck with you. If you have shot down a lot of UFOs in the month, landed UFOs might end up being traps set for XCOM with about twice as many enemies as normal. Trap UFOs, landed large class UFOs, and terror missions also sometimes pick from aliens they shouldn't be able to field yet, further increasing the lethality of these missions. All of the things I just described, all of the aliens having to do things on the strat layer and manage their own resources and gradually build up and up as the campaign goes on, all of that is added by Long War. Not a hint of that is from a vanilla game. By default, without Dynamic War enabled, there is guaranteed to be a landed large in the first month of the game that you can interrupt. This mission is there to teach you a very valuable lesson. You are not supposed to win every mission. This is so unbelievably difficult for someone just starting out, and you will not succeed if you are inexperienced. With enough practice and squad sight cheese, though, you can reliably get through it every time. It is difficult because of genuine difficulty and not because of bullshit. Come in with good enough tactics and you'll come at the other end with an enormous boost to your campaign. Note that I said, by default. Long War is potentially the most customizable game I have ever played in my entire life. Default GameCore.ini contains just about every single variable you might ever want to change. And I think I know this file better than a bishop knows the bible. Practically all of the game's stats, for XCOM and aliens, the cost of things, and most mechanics are entirely editable. There's also an optional training version which you can slot in that has significantly easier variables for everything, in case default long war is too difficult. My version of default game core to INI is something I very embarrassingly treasure quite deeply because of the half a decade history behind its edits. I have absolutely no problem making the game easier for myself if I find it more enjoyable, which is why I played with a significantly easier air game for most of my playtime. Playing without that now, and yeah, it, it lives up to its infamous difficulty. You may have noticed my soldier names are also... interesting. I have a custom name list of curated online usernames picked out from both Reddit and Twitch. Knowing real people are dying makes it so much better when CCS fails to proc for no good reason. If by complete chance you see yourself in these clips, do let me know. Long War has a set of second wave options which are always available in the main menu when you go to start a campaign. I have never played with some of these off. Fuck repairing items. I will play without Commander's Choice once Hell Freeze is over. Red Fog is my bestie. I hope to never do another Exalt mission for the rest of my time on Earth. And managing soldiers' random stat increases can go fuck itself. Some of those might be integral parts of the experience for some people, but personally, seeing a sniper use their aim as a dump stat so they can instead max their defense makes me want to impale them with rebar. Here is my chosen campaign setup. Dynamic War is something I probably should have brought up in the first video. It roughly cuts the length of campaigns in half and is something I would highly recommend ticking on. It keeps the pace up significantly and makes finishing a campaign a lot more achievable, though campaigns are still probably about twice as long as vanilla. 
As for the rest of the second wave options, I would highly recommend permanently avoiding absolutely critical and aiming angles due to how radically they fuck with balance and positioning, but the rest are largely personal preference. If you really want to fuck your shit up, you can turn on training roulette and just see what happens. I also think Green Fog is a blight upon humanity, but considering the popularity of Long War Rebalanced, that's clearly not a popular opinion. That dig will probably be the last time I ever talk about Long War Rebalanced. I don't have enough experience with it to cover it in detail, and I have absolutely no interest in playing it after looking into the changes that it makes. This goes for pretty much everything, but I like to think that I have enough integrity that I wouldn't really want to cover something without having finished it. It's not like objectively bad or anything, people may enjoy their games however they like, but I've already got a setup that works for me. I'm not going to go into how to install these, you can work that out yourself if you really want, but I will also point to line of sight indicators, the UI mod manager, and especially the loadout mod, to be huge recommends for other community created additions. The loadout one in particular has undeniably shaved hours off of staring at the screen. In lots of games, all choices are meant to be created equal. TF2 wants all of its unlocks to be side grades in an equal playing field, a hero shooter wants all of their characters to be viable in different ways. This is true in just about every game that has build choices, or arguably choices at all. Games from Loop Hero to The Sims to TF2 to a visual novel want all of their options to be equally viable. XCOM, on the other hand, does not work like this, or at least is exceptionally terrible at it. Your difference in experience can be extreme based on squad composition. XCOM 2 essentially requires randomly rolled classes to be enabled because otherwise you would turn everyone into grenadiers and the game would become unlosable thanks to guaranteed damage. Base Enemy Within is also infamous for dropping the player with 8 supports and no one else. Long War 1 handles this the best in the series, in my opinion. You have 8 classes to pick from, and 6 to 8 class slots. Running one of each class, I think, is the intended way, especially without Commander's Choice, but the amount of variety you truly have available is immense. And experimenting with class setups will make the game much, much easier. You have about 16 million squad setups to pick from, not counting mechs. I made some okay videos covering the classes a while back, but never ended up discussing the Rocketeer or Assault because I didn't use them in the comp that I was running at the time. I think I still stand by what I proposed in that set of videos. The most optimal way to play is choosing the hell out of squad sight and shooting aliens who can't see you. It's frankly fairly broken, and sniper spam is ridiculously good with proper tactics. You're just relatively defenseless should the enemy ever make it to you. Recently though, I decided to actively reject this playstyle and ban all squad sight. If I'm going to activate the entire map, I'm going to do it on my own terms, goddammit. Assault Com is by far the most aggro I've ever played in this game. I rushed mechs and ended up getting them in July. Typically I deploy them around November. The power increase from getting mechs on the field is so visceral. It feels like XCOM has deployed WMDs against the aliens who couldn't give less of a shit about their puny plasma. In this squad, they're assisted by a few assaults and a number of support elements which are there to supply the assaults and mechs with suppression, smokes, healing, and scouting when necessary. These assaults are built to be as tanky as possible, and I had never done this before. I'm extremely used to flinching and cringing when enemies take actions, but with this squad, I could not care less. No matter the numbers advantage the aliens may hold, their actions mean nothing against the 7DR assault. You see what I mean about different playstyles being dramatically different? These two playstyles are the complete opposite ends of the spectrum, and they might as well be like playing two entirely separate games in the tactical layer. When people complain about Long War or XCOM in general being too hard, take a look at their comps and you might find out why they hold that opinion. I bet there's going to be some Rocketeers in there. What's stopping you from bringing six engineers in every mission and shoving grenades down everyone's throats? Nothing. Well, apart from destroying every piece of loot you could have ever possibly gotten, Enemy Within was very good at giving you better options with worse rewards. Using them doesn't feel like a punishment, it feels like a last resort. The very first video essay I ever made was on this topic, actually, and you can go watch it here. It's kind of mid. I love this game's art style, and I doubly love how Long War recontextualizes the assets in the game to make them way more believable. In vanilla, XCOM got these kind of cartoony, oversized weapons, and Exalt were the ones that got guns based on modern firearms, like the G36, as well as unique laser weapons later on, too. Long War took Exalt's weapons and repurposed them into two brand new weapon tiers, making Exalt Ballistics Tier 1, Exalt Lasers Tier 2, and XCOM Ballistics Tier 3 with sick effects, and XCOM Lasers Tier 4. It fits so well this almost seems like it's what Jake intended. There's a clear progression from what's based in reality to what's more fantastical and sci-fi. Enemy Within at large has a fantastic art style, and its combination of realistic elements somewhat cartoonified is super unique and runs excellently on every machine you could ever possibly throw this game on. Its download size is also minuscule, relative to some 
other games. This might be contentious, let me know. But I also genuinely believe the design for XCOM's mechs is the coolest mech or mech adjacent design in all of media. I don't care that the description for the base augment says that the arms and legs lack flexibility. Sign me the fuck up, Shen. I volunteer. Give me a kinetic strike module, and I will make Valin cry when her new autopsy subject comes back looking like they got rammed by an Illyrium powered Ford Focus. This game is far from perfect, of course, but it just gets so much right. Enemy Within was the first game to bring Overwatch to the mainstream, and it still handled it better than every single one since. Giant pancake Overwatches don't fix the problem. Being able to act on the enemy turn is just incredibly powerful regardless of circumstance. Enemy Unknown realized this and applied a flat aim malice to all reaction shots, but this appears to have gone completely missed by the rest of the industry, who see no problem with giving everyone access to it. This inevitably leads to Overwatch camping being the optimal play for everyone, all of the time. If you balance around that, your game will be incredibly fucking boring. And if you don't balance around it, Overwatch will completely unearth and destroy the balance of your game. Dragon Alliance 3. That being said, Enemy Within's line of sight is consistently fucked. The pacing of Long War's research tree is pretty out of whack, with autopsies and interrogations being too easy to ignore, squad sight is incredibly broken, the AI can be incredibly dumb, Sapper is a stupid perk and should just be standard, trying to beagle rush maneuver pods can be a huge time sink, mech nicknames almost never get rolled, and smoke and chem grenades are great deceivers who have caused me much pain and suffering. I think that about covers everything negative I have to say. Really, that's it. They're all incredibly minor nitpicks of a legendary behemoth of a game which I'm proud to say I have as many hours in as I do. All of that time was well spent, and I regret none of it. I feel the need to also shout out Beagle Rush for, well, many reasons, but specifically because he's the one who got me into Long War and effectively taught me how to play it. We, we, we had a salmon target. Okay, there we go. We got a salmon. We have a salmon chance to hit on this one. Uh, but we've got a bright lipstick red chance to hit on these two crabs, apparently. He is probably my favorite content creator of all time, just past myself, of course, and I feel genuinely indebted to him for showing me not only XCOM, but also Star Sector and Cortex Command too. It's why I included that little Easter egg of him in one of the Star Sector videos. It feels bizarre that my own aforementioned Star Sector video now has more views than the one that introduced me to the game seven years ago. I'm not gonna lie, I was in a pretty bad place for most of the time that I was playing Long War and watching Beagle's streams. They were an incredibly consistently enjoyable experience, and I appreciate it all the more in retrospect thanks to the stability that it brought in my life at the time. I have no clue if he'll see this, but if he does, thanks dude. Seriously. The Beagle Rush highlights made by Cat Calliope are some of the funniest content I have ever watched, period. This is kind of embarrassing to admit, but when I was really going through it, I even went back to watch all of the streams he had salvaged from back in 2015. Probably a few hundred hours in total. I don't regret any of that time either. The more recent streams he's done are even better too, and also he's based as hell. It feels odd to end this video about Long War with seemingly unrelated genuine thanks to another creator, but I mean it when I say that Beagle Rush was a huge factor on why I have enjoyed Long War as much as I have. If you ever need good podcast-flavored content to listen to, Live and Impossible is the first thing I'd direct you towards, and his streams are the second thing I'd point to. I mentioned last time that a set of mods for XCOM 2, Operators vs. Aliens, was probably my favorite XCOM experience. I do really mean it. I very rarely disagree with any of his design decisions. If he surrounded himself with a team that I can keep him on track, I think he'd be a banger game designer. Hey, last time I checked. Fraxis is down one of those that's a recent. Thanks to Emmy for their reckless financial abandon. Both them and the rest of my patrons are all wonderful people. I love you all, and join my Discord.